Richardson, but this was a plan that was part of the land use plan, and I believe that Chris was the author of that plan that you all adopted to move forward, so this was the next phase to do that. Uh, we've taken care of a lot of infrastructure that we've never had before, one of them being with our sewer, uh, with the USDA, the other being with our water, with the USDA, so we've been able to map it, to model it for both the water and the sewer, so your basic infrastructure is there. Uh, Mr. Tom Turk is here from MNS, and we started using, uh, I can't speak other than in 2013, but the street program didn't really start until uh, this year, or we're using that wonderful street maintenance tax to start improving on the streets. And so, uh, if you, one of the things that you put in that you approved in your plan was to grow the city of Floresville, and so this goes in that direction. Based on the plan of the land use that you all approved. No, I agree that we should expand our boundaries and we should collect more, more ad valorem taxes and more sales tax, but I'm not sure if right now, at this very moment, that we're ready to accept that uh, and, and grow the city. I think let's take care of our, our current infrastructure and let's reevaluate uh, uh, sometime in the future. Councilman, I think that's exactly what we're doing. And Mr. Hug, if we table this uh, annexation plan or don't go forward with the annexation plan, we're tying our hands for the future because of what the legislature requires in annexation. If we don't have an annexation plan in three years, we won't be able to annex. Even if we have grown the city, repaired the infrastructure, done those things, and in three years we're ready to annex, without the annexation plan, we cannot annex. With an annexation plan, okay, if in three years we haven't been able to keep up with our streets or haven't been able to keep up with our water or our infrastructure, the council at that time can choose not to annex. But the lack of an annexation plan will tie the hands of future councils. I disagree. I can disagree also. One of the things that happened when we did the annexation for the Richardson was the county came and the appraisal district came and asked the question of why we were not annexing the commercial districts along the 181 corridor. Because they were saying that we were hop skipping here and there. And I believe it was Leanne from yeah, Leanne Hochek that mentioned that. And that was one of the questions of uh, the commissioner filed and the questions of the judge was why are we hopping back and forth. The answer that staff gave uh, at that meeting was that we were going to do an annexation plan that would address that, that would fill in the holes. And we met with county to say, what holes do you need us to fill in so that we can annex smartly that they can agree with? We also are putting on the ETJ, which is part of this, because you know as we annex, our ETJ grows. And we've been working with, working with them on permitting and things such as that based on an annexation and an uh, ETJ agreement. And so this is what we set up for 2014 and 2015, but that was one of the requests for their support for our first annexation was that we would fill in the holes. Definitely along the 181 <coughs> highway, it's gonna fill in those holes. And you're missing that revenue from McDonald's, uh, for example, John Deere. <laughs> there are so many other things that are already assumed to be in our city. Uh, what's the name of that crazy? Right it's not in our city limits. It's well, then we need to relook at the boundaries that we're looking on this platform. So that part of that plan in the corridor to take care of that is not in our city limits now. So things that people assume are ours are not ours. And so they are getting, Randolph Brooks is getting, it appears to be most of the city services, but they're not part of the city. And so you had a complaint earlier today about what's happening in McDonald's. It's not our city limits. So we need to fill in those holes, and that's what we told county we were going to do along the corridor was to fill in the holes for the annexation plan, which is also one of the things that we actually did. So I just look for uh, the council to look at the annexation plan to see if you want to move it forward. Well, this is just presentation item. We don't have to vote yeah. until the CNA later. There is a CNA later, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, my mayor and council. I'm going to go ahead and present uh, financials for the month of February 2016. 
As usual, I'm going to present the higher um, funds that have a big impact on our revenue and expenditures. Uh, general fund for the revenues collected year to date were one million seven point four six eight four. And I want to mention that I'm cut up on other posting. On expenditures, we had one million four seventy four four oh four giving us a percentage of 36% of, expen of um, expenditures over the budget. So we still need seven months for the year. 36% we are doing very good on uh, general fund. For water fund, we have co collected 570000 we have expense 503,476, giving us a percentage of 35,000, I mean 35 percent, I'm sorry. Uh, wastewater, we have collected 393,981, expenses 334,921, with a 27.41 percentage. On the sales tax, uh, we're still on the decrease, but I'm happy to announce that the decrease has increased a little bit. I don't know if you understand that. Uh, I want to say about either December or January, we were at 11 or 15 percent loss on the on the sales tax overall. And right now, for the for the overall uh, tax collection for the month, we're only 4.18. <coughs> And for the year, at the same um, level of the month, is 9%, giving us $125,000 on the negative on revenues for sales tax. I think uh, sales tax are bouncing back. We might not get a big revenue, but we're going to have enough to just flatline. This concludes, concludes my presentation. Do you all have any questions? <coughs> Ms. Khan, uh, I'm just trying to understand some discrepancies in the numbers. Uh, on page 15 of the detail for the general fund, it shows revenue uh, over under expenditures to be $280,679.22 under. But on the cover page, it shows $270,279. There's a discrepancy of about $10,000 in there. This is, if you notice, on the, on the current budget, there's a negative of $10,400. So I have an error in posting on the books. Okay. So I need to go in and look at that. And also, I, I need to make sure that the expenditure or the, or the month to date to the year to date are correct so I can get rid of that negative. Okay. okay. But the total expenditures is what I'm reporting in here for the month. Okay. I was just concerned about the, yeah. the discrepancy. No, no, no. There's a, a, a posting mirror there. And I believe that it has to do with the budget amendment. Okay. Uh, on page one of the general funds under license and permits, were the game room permits included in license permits, et cetera? That showing that revenue at 92%? Yes, sir, it is. By the time that we created, um, we had not, we were going to create a revenue account for just the collection of the A liners, but we didn't have enough time. Will that so be separated out later? It will be separated later because I have to show it. I have to show the, the separation of it. So everything right now is on license and permits. That's the reason why you have more revenues collected than what we budgeted. And, and lastly, Connie, I, as I went through the detail, I noticed a spike in utilities, specifically telephone, electricity, water, as it related to the police department and very specifically to the parks and recreation department that are at 171 percent of budget for electricity was this 
something that got misprojected? Did we have some kind of... Okay, this is what happened at the time of budget. When we have the workshops and I bring the budget before council, I bring the, the last four years of actual expenditures to the table and we estimate the budget, okay? Now that I have had a turnaround of personnel in my department, we have found a lot of things that were miscoded. I'm fixing that. I have to fix that for the audit, okay? So if you're seeing that right now, it's because we're coding it correctly and it is going to be a difference on the budget. So I'm gonna have to come before you, explain everything that happened, all the misquoting, and then how we're gonna go ahead and amend. Excuse me, we don't have a quorum. Can we wait? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor, since procedurally there's no vote on this issue and it's just a presentation, does the quorum? Because it's posted on an open meeting uh, as a separate item, I would say just to avoid any questions. I don't know if legally there, there absolutely has to be because there is no action, but just for appearance's sake, if it's not going to be a long way. Thank you, Mr. So once I get all of these corrected, and then, uh, like I said, I'm going to come before you and I'm going to have a spreadsheet and explain exactly where the differences are so we can go ahead and do a budget amendment and move line, line items. Well, I, I, I can see that, that that's going to be a shortfall, a budget shortfall there, mm -hmm. as well as our sales tax revenue mm -hmm. being a, a shortfall. Hopefully the next budget amendment will address both. Yeah, well, it's not necessarily going to make a lot of difference because I'm not going to come in with increasing the budget. It will be just to move from uh, one department to another because one department was paying all the utilities when the other department was not. Okay. So now we're coding it correctly. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, uh, under uh, Fund 509, Marin City Council, I see uh, five uh, travel and training for council and travel and training for the mayor. And I show expense for uh, all of the, the council members. Was there travel and training expense incurred by a council member in my place? I guess I'm, one of these is councilman place five. Uh, between the beginning of the fiscal year and, and November 12th, uh, that explains that $103 or $300 because I haven't participated in any travel or training. We're using that line item not only for uh, travel and training, but also for memberships. So we probably enroll you, enroll all the council in a membership for, for a council that that's the reason why you have a charge in that place. Okay. Thank you. Explain for which membership? Uh, no, I know that there was one at least or two that they were sent out for council. Uh, council the one is TML, and for sure. TML for everyone, and then I think Council Town mm -hmm. requested a membership. Of the Hispanic officials. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So that was coming out of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. County. All right. Next, Freedom Fest, item C, Freedom Fest, 4A and C, of course. Okay, Mayor and City Council, um, I spoke to you a little while ago, I think at the last meeting, that um, 
Riverdale is not going to be doing fireworks this year. They're also not going to be doing the balloon, but they're not going to be doing fireworks this year. And so um, we had planned to, at the event center, have some activity, and we're making a presentation to the foray on next Tuesday as to that uh, type of activity. And so we wanted to not have uh, the word be out there and people saying, oh, we're going to have fireworks and we're be able to do some things. And so we wanted to present you just a disciplinary flyer of some of the things. And we'll be back to you with detail on the cost and budgeting of what that would be. Uh, we cannot use a hotel motel tax for fireworks. They're very specific about that. But we're looking at getting some uh, vendors and we've had some sponsors say they can sponsor the fireworks and then we can use um, some hotel motel tax maybe for some of the other activities at the event center. So I just wanted to <coughs> give you this presented to you. Um, it has been finalized. We're having a meeting, on, a special meeting on Tuesday with the foray uh, to discuss this and then we'll come and bring it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item D, MS Engineering update on the Louder G, the Young Event Center repairs. Mr. Houston? Tom Turk from Reverend. Oh, Mr. Turk, you changed your name. Jonathan Houston, who uh, was our project manager on this, is on vacation today. Okay. So I'm. Uh, Okay, uh, Ms. Turner asked us to come in and give you a, uh, a brief update on the status on the, uh, the uh, repair work going on at the event center. The current status is, is that the work is what we call substantially complete, which means that uh, uh, most of the work has been done and the uh, full use of the uh, facility is being enjoyed uh, by the city. Uh, an inspection was made with the contractor. Uh, there is a uh, punch list of about 10 items maybe, and the contractor is working through those. Uh, we expect that those items will be cleared sometime in the next month or so. We'll, we'll close out the project uh, next month. Uh, for uh, just for uh, uh, history sakes, the emphasis of the repairs at the event center was number one, the roof, fix it so that it doesn't leak. Uh, we did some envelope repairs, which includes some of the walls and the windows. Uh, we remediated and cleaned up all the mold, and then we did some side improvements to improve the drainage. By far, uh, the most important aspect of the repair was the roof. Uh, that's where we put the money, that's where we put the emphasis. And you can see by the photographs here, the before and after, before on the left, after on the right, that um, that roof looks a hundred times better than it did a few months ago. Uh, and the roof has been thoroughly inspected. Uh, since it was substantially complete, we've had some significant rain events and there's been no leakage. Uh, so we feel pretty good about um, what's been done to the roof. There's some before and after pictures of the uh, uh, mold, and all of that's been cleaned up uh, and looks really nice. And then um, the gym floor, which was not part of the 
uh, original repair in the contract. Uh, the, uh, the, the roof leaked during construction and some of the gym floor, floor was damaged. The contractor was responsible for The contractor was responsible for uh, fixing the floor, uh, and uh, the, the city and the contractor partnered up, or the contractor replaced half of the floor. Uh, the city kicked in some money, and the entire gym floor was refinished and redone, and looks uh, very nice. Have each one of you received a copy of this presentation? So I can go on, uh, see if we can get this computer to restart. Do you have an extra one for me? Thank you. Appreciate it. I always bring one in case the power goes out. Uh, as far as the uh, financial, the, the final uh, financials for the contract, the original amount was around $180,000. Uh, there have been three, uh, what I would call owner-directed owner changers on behalf of the city of Floresville uh, for cleaning some additional mold, uh, doing some duct insulation and, and paint work out there, and of course the gym floor repair. Uh, so we're looking at a final contract amount of around $870,000. And just to put that into perspective, um, this was a, a difficult, repair a project for a building uh, and uh, to go through uh, an exercise like we did and only have a few owner directed changes was pretty good. We had, we had a good contractor. Um, there was a good partnership during the whole construction process. Uh, it wasn't without its problems, but we worked through them. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very happy with uh, how everything turned out. Are there any questions? One of the issues that got brought up during the original review of what needed to be done there was the HVAC system or the controller on the HVAC system. Has, yes. and, and as being one of the causes of the mold, was that remediated in this process? Yes, it was. Um, each, each, uh, each one of the HVAC units was taken offline, checked, uh, repaired, put back online. Uh, the controller was uh, replaced with a new uh, and updated controller. Uh, it has all been wired back together and it is functioning very well. With, with the controls being there where they, the users can sit? Yes. And they've, uh, uh, the, the uh, users have been trained on how to operate it. So it's working very well. So we should see some significant utility savings out of this. And my understanding was that the HVAC system was running full bore 24 7 uh, versus being able to be controlled by area or even from daytime to evening. That is correct. Uh, the, the controller that was installed is designed to uh, think in, in some ways <coughs> and, and sense when to power up and when to power down units. Uh, so I would be monitoring the electric bills to make sure that uh, they, they do, in fact, go down. Yes, and along that same line, Mayor and Council, um, Baird and Sons was actually on site and part of that. They did the inspections to make sure all the HVCs came back on. Uh, they also are provided training for staff, staff that are there, as well as staff in other departments to be trained on that. And they're also giving us a maintenance agreement. Uh, we already have an agreement with them for them to change the filters but we need to make sure that the, those are, property, are properly maintained. And so they provide, uh, where they come out three times a year, different times, service to all of those units, keep them up and running, and so uh, we have a maintenance contract to move forward on maintaining those units going. And uh, I'll have Tom tell you what is the warranty on that new roof? Uh, 20 years. We have a 20 year warranty. Jonathan would know that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a 20 year warranty on the roof uh, that we'll be able to have once this is complete and we've accepted it. So uh, it did go well, we had some issues, but uh, there are some other things we've discovered during this construction that we do need to bring to the council for them to have approval and to know what, what we need to do moving forward. 
Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, on the change orders, the gym floor is at uh, 9,000. What was the total cost of that gym? Uh, the gym floor change was uh, the 9,000 was the gym floor. If you could imagine the floor for the contractor, where it flooded for them, it was all open under the roof. And so then they had allowed, right outside the concession area, there had allowed uh, coolers to be sitting on the floor, and so there was some damage there. So that wasn't their responsibility. So we approved a change order to fix that one area by um, the concession area. We have, we'll be coming up with some new rules to tell people they can't come in and bring coolers and set them on the floor because it didn't walk the floor right there by the concession stand area. But uh, the total cost of the gym was what? Uh, their insurance paid it and it's $86,000. It was, it was stripped down all the way, and even the subfloor, the vapor and all the subfloor was replaced. That's entirely new floor. And waxed and buffed and shiny and everything. Should that have been a, a bid process? Uh, we didn't pay for it, it wasn't us. No. Their insurance no, company that, had to pay uh, when, when damage occurs like that during construction, mm -hmm. uh, there's a claim process that, that we go through uh, and we went through that process, and then they turned that claim over to their insurance company. Yeah, but I, I thought we said there wasn't part of an original cost estimate. It wasn't an Why? original specs. Yeah, okay. Originally, that floor was not supposed to be uh, repaired, such as, because I know some of the complaints, I know Council Nieto had said it earlier, and we said we were going to look at the floor uh, after, you know, we had all the construction done, and so the construction took care of that for us. Refresh my memory, you voted for all these change orders? The $40,000 in change orders? I'm sorry? Refresh my memory. Did we vote for the $40,000 in change orders? Uh, you have a change order in the, built in the contract to submit for you, uh, anywhere between 15 and 20 percent in contingency. So when you voted for the entire project, yes. But there was in, uh, the paint, the regrowth, the mold variation we had to do very quickly because uh, there's a lot more mold and we had to have somebody come test it. We had some people who could complain they could build it back at the throat. We wanted to make sure it was safe. So that came before the council for you all, the remote remediation. <coughs> so you had additional mold readings. We had to do some things and some testing. Uh, the duct work, when they pull out the ducts and we're placing some of the ducts, they found it was, it was it was painted and they were dripping down the new walls. And then of course the gym floor was the odd portion of replacing the floor. finished with his work in the first or second week in April. April. Uh, he is basically more or less on schedule uh, and he should be complete within the next week or two. There will be a pretty good flurry of activity over the next couple of weeks and then I will inspect and do a punch list and he'll be finished. Do you, do you all have the presentation? Yes. Handouts? Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, we put this uh, graphic together just to kind of give you an idea of uh, where he currently stands. The uh, projects that are colored green uh, are projects that uh, he's put down the lion's share of the uh, chip seal. Uh, he's got two areas where he's done full reconstruction on A Street and C Street. The items you see there in yellow are areas where he's currently working on those streets. Those happen to be full reconstruction streets that he's got to excavate out the material and bring in new basic material and then do his chip seals. Uh, and then the streets that you see there in blue are uh, roads that he'll be working on in the next week or two. He's, he's done some prep work on those roads, but he'll, he'll be doing the chip sealing work in the next week or two. So that's kind of a snapshot of where he is today. What's left to be done? Obviously, uh, he has uh, chip sealing and full reconstruction work left to do. Uh, once he completes that, he'll <coughs> come back to Eighth Street and, and clean things up. Uh, we'll conduct a substantial uh, completion inspection with him. We'll go through every single street with the contractor and point out uh, any deficiencies or anything that, that needs to be cleaned up. We'll document that in the punch list, uh, and then once he uh, completes that, we'll do a final inspection, and then we'll close out the contract. Those streets, Tom, that are going to have that loose gravel, yes, sir. is there another phase that's going to be uh, done? Yes. As part of his cleanup, uh, he is required to sweep the streets and pick up all the loose gravel. That is in his contract. Okay, specifically, uh, what street was it, Ms. Turner? C Street. C Street on the other side of the highway by the ice machine. Did you look at that street? I did. What do you think? I use a lot of loose gravel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and, and this is probably where uh, we could have done a better job with our uh, specifications. Uh, we would have hoped that the contractor, after he had chip sealed the street, that would have come in a few days later and swept it. Uh, he has chose to do all his sweeping yeah. at, the end of, at the end of his contract, which has caused some inconvenience, obviously. Uh, so uh, uh, next time we do something like this, uh, we're requiring to come in within you know, a week or so and, and actually sweep. It's a little less efficient, but uh, the inconvenience that was caused to, to avoid that would be worth it. Okay, so there's no other sealant that needs to be applied the way it is right now on C Street? No, C Street, Street and A Street both have uh, two courses on them, and uh, so they, the chip sealing is done. Okay, so it's just a matter of sweeping nexus. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mayor, you had a question about the street in your area. It was also C Street, C Street. but it was a level, you were concerned about the level yeah. of... It was unfinished between the C Street, at the end of C Street. And then it was a question about the, the level in the street that's in your area, especially. I think you said you were concerned about it may not be built back up enough. I got a slide for that. Oh, you'll notice that at the end of every street that they look unfinished. What is true? It's unfinished. He's not done yet. Uh, the, the machinery that they use, the, the, the oil truck and the rock spreaders, are designed to go straight for long distances. And they don't work well in tight areas or where you have to turn. So what they'll do is they'll come back with what we call a wand. Okay, and they'll hand apply that oil on the street. They'll shovel the rock by hand. They'll bring in a, bring in a pneumatic roller and roll it in. And then they'll sweep it. And it will look finished. Uh, they will do that for all those areas uh, up to that intersecting street. So it will look nice and finished when it's all done. He's just not finished yet. He's going to come back and do all the streets in that fashion <coughs> after he's finished with all his chips. Will he finish off the sides also? Because I noticed the day that it rained, there were puddles and it looked like a I've got a slide for that too. <laughs> That's a pretty good example of what it's going to look like, except for the, the rock being swept. 
uh, a nice dark surface. Uh, it's going to be uh, kind of rough uh, after it's newly placed. You know this is it? Uh, I believe it's six took a lot of pictures the other day. So. <laughs> Will it eventually look like 181? I mean, that's no. what it, people expect streets to look like. Yeah, and let me, and let me speak to that. Uh, uh, this is a chip seal, okay? And it's a very common method uh, used in this area to extend the life of a, of a street. Uh, it's inexpensive, and it lasts a long time. You should get about a good five to 10 years out of that chip seal. So there's a balance between what you get and what you pay. So you get a lot of a lot of bang for your buck. Um, the surface that you're talking about is, is a hot mix of asphalt to concrete surface. So it's nice and smooth. Yes, okay. that's what I expected. Yeah, that's about two to three times the cost mm -hmm. of what we're doing. So uh, if we chose to uh, uh, basically overlay the streets, we could have only done a half to a third of, of what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So it's very expensive, but it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and uh, I apologize for not asking more questions at the beginning of the project uh, to see what your preferences have been. We could have at least discussed that issue and given you some options. Uh, we, uh, based on what we were told, we just assumed that uh, the chip ceiling uh, would meet your needs. And again, next time we'll ask more questions. The way the program should work if the voters keep on approving the, the straight maintenance, it's a perpetual straight maintenance program. Right, you should so be doing this every year. Every year, yes. So even if we do less streets, if we do something like the, the highway you're talking about, it would last, what, 20, 30 years? Well, um, not necessarily. Um, street maintenance is, is about basically preserving what you have and extending its life. Um, there are some streets that you may not want to invest that much money for right. because, because because they're they're not in that great great shape. Okay, and I think a, a great example is um, I think there's a railroad street up by the high school. Yes. Uh, you know that was one of our priority streets. When I went out and looked at it, I realized that it was in pretty bad shape uh, and that it had drainage problems. There was drainage coming off of the uh, football field, I believe. And I knew that anything we did to that street from a maintenance perspective would be a waste of money. Uh, so we took that off the list and said, sometime in the near future, we've actually got to, to redesign that street so that it drains properly and that whatever investment we make uh, will, will last a long time. Okay, so, so we just don't uh, blanketly decide to overlay streets. They've got to be in fairly good shape so that they'll last a long time and your investment pays off. So we make a judgment call on that uh, for every street. Do we know what's left over once this project is, is done? Um, it's going to be about 300000 Because right now we have 960,000 on plan balance. And our next deposit is coming in. Do we like any portal? The to the street main? Uh, no, monthly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we get more or less about three hundred thousand dollars a year. Roughly. Okay. So it might be time you would start looking at, at uh, the next phase. Yeah, yes. you you oh, asked oh, me oh, for. Oh how much money was left on the balance so right. you could do another project on the street. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Turner. Did, Go ahead, please. It was my understanding that the council did a tax note or equivalent to it for approximately a million dollars for street maintenance. No. 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 That didn't happen? Mm -hmm. No. The um, tax note was set up for a million dollars in uh, engineering fees for the USDA projects. Okay, but, um, and then the other remaining part of that was to do uh, a car and some ADA stuff, but there was nothing with street maintenance in that. And so Tom, if you can just let them know that you're putting back the kind of street that they already have. I mean, 
So we were restoring what was already there. We already had chip seal streets throughout the city, but there was no street maintenance money budgeted for other than what was in street maintenance. Okay, that's what I was asking. Uh, I was under the breath. So what we have in the balance of $300,000 is where we sit today with still street maintenance tax coming in in the next year that we can plan for. So potentially we could plan by the end of 2017 to have $600,000 in street maintenance right. and, and could plan a project accordingly. Now, if you think about it, we, we have about six hundred, six or 700000 in this year's program, which is kind of a catch-up because we didn't right. do anything last year. You should be doing about uh, at least $300,000 a year taking that uh, maintenance tax and putting it to good use, which is basically a program that's half of the size. Okay? And, and we still have to take under consideration our, our street city employees. What are we going to do with them? What the street employees are doing right now is they're doing the patching and the uh, potholes and we have their door patch machine working. So they're working on that as well as the drainage and the ditch line is what they're working on. So they go back in the streets that's not in the street maintenance program. They're working on actually doing some patching and you see it throughout the city. So that's what our streets are doing. Not only that, but also taking care of all our signage that we have because we need to replace some of our street signs that are being faded. Now, they've been working very closely with this contractor. Uh, Alex speaks with them every day, and so they've been using some of the equipment. Um, I have not uh, spoken to uh, or anticipated the phase two yet on maintenance because we were having so many questions on this phase of the street maintenance, and so we wanted to see how that is completed before we talk about the next phase, especially when I had uh, several councilmen to uh, say they had some concerns about uh, the chip seal type of streets. We must uh, concentrate on, on, on our city employees, educating them uh, and training them, and, and so those contractors can be moved aside and, 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 and our city employees do the job that they are getting paid for. They're doing and a job so on the streets, you have to remember the, right, the, but, but, the but, type but, of equipment. But the hardcore job. But the type as, of as, equipment. As we have, the and, equipment. And we have to give them those those uh, uh, vehicles that, that to move on. The type of equipment that we have, we don't have the equipment that can do what he's talking about doing. Well, we must invest. We must invest in, 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 in those uh, items. We must. We cannot continue with, with, with this path, with this rule. Right. And this is kind of a, before you get in, right. this is a presentation and discussion right. on, yeah. on just the current operation, not future. We can have a CNA item on that on a future agenda. Um, regarding C Street, it's just a small piece, but it's a highly used street because of the middle school. They take the light, they cheat, you know, they don't go to the end of the street, you know, the end of B Street, they take a little street yes. and then cut off. Can that, can they pay extra attention to that street? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's a street that we totally reconstructed. We recognize that it was in bad shape. Mm -hmm. We recognize that it had more traffic on it than most other streets. So that played into our decision to reconstruct it. So it's got a full eight inches of base material and it has a double chip seal. Uh, so uh, it's in, it should be in pretty good shape and it should last for a long time. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, uh, as part of the, the contractor's uh, clean up and, and finish out uh, tasks, he's gonna go back and fix some of the streaks and, and potholing and, and uh, gaps. Uh, and this is very normal for paving operations like this. Those nozzles, sometimes they shut off or not clean properly or whatever in these streets. He'll come back with that one and he'll, he'll we'll make sure that he fixes all these things. Uh, and again, he's going to be responsible <coughs> for sweeping the streets and removing the rocks. Um, uh, it's kind of interesting uh, here. Uh, I'm showing you two pictures. On the on the left is what I would call bird baths. Uh, these are depressions in the pavement that hold water after a rainstorm. Uh, he is required to fix this. And again, he'll he'll come back with the wine and throw it in with a rock and and roll it all in. On the left is some ponding of water that's on the edge of the street and outside of the street. 
If you think about it, all he is doing is applying oil and rock to the existing surface. He is really not doing any work outside of the pavement edge. Uh, this is a maintenance project. It's not a drainage project. In fact, it's against the law for us to use any money for drainage. So in this case, and there probably are other cases throughout the city where if it didn't drain before this project, it's not going to drain after either. So if there's a drainage problem that exists today, it's going to uh, exist afterwards. Uh, and this is probably something for Alex and his crews to come back in afterwards and clean up some of the borrow ditches and make sure that the, the, the streets drain properly. So a lot of people will have the perception that the, the, the situation on the right is something that the contractor has to fix. It's not necessarily the case. Excuse me, Tom? Yes. In your earlier slide, you said that uh, you were going to be doing a, a complete inspection or a substantial complete inspection Correct. of all of this. Will uh, part of the city staff be involved in that to identify yes. things like this for future drainage issues as well as uh, any other issues that may be not addressed by the contractor or to also ensure that the contractor is Absolutely. The, the city will be with us on both inspections. Uh, they'll uh, uh, help us pull together the punch list items. Uh, they'll be along with us the whole way. Uh, by the way, there is a clause in the contract, it's called the elementary clause, where the contractor is required to give access to the construction site to the, to the city street crews, uh, and they're welcome to uh, observe construction uh, you know, while they're building the street so they can, they can see the contractor's activities and, and learn along the way. Can I ask a question? Yes. On the death screen. Yes. That mailbox? Yes. And the screen? Yes. Who's liable in between the two? Uh, I have a slide for that, but I'll address it right here if you like. Um, that's what we call extraneous pavement. Uh, when we set up this maintenance program, uh, the, the, uh, the goal was to pave that 20 or 25 feet of pavement that everybody uses every day. Okay. Uh, that covers, uh, and that approach works well for 90% of all the roads in, in, in Floresville. There are areas like this where there is bits and pieces of pavement that it's, that's outside that 20 feet. Uh, and uh, Alex uh, works with the contractor every day, and it's Alex's call as to whether that extraneous pavement should be chip sealed. Okay, so it's a call that he makes in the, in the field. And if, and if he doesn't feel comfortable, he'll send a picture to us, and we'll look at it, and, and we'll, weigh in, we'll, we'll weigh in. Uh, there are examples of this in a, in a lot of different places. If that piece of pavement really isn't being used, if it's not really functional, nobody really uses it, then it may not make any sense to, to, to pave it and try to preserve it. Every square yard that we pave, we have to pay for it. So we have to make a judgment call as to whether it's worth it. My question is, uh, who would maintain that? That, that is, area. that is the city's responsibility. Yes. That's so, a huge problem. Then. That uh, it's a huge problem. Huh? That that if we're only going to pave the center of the street, we're going to leave a city area un unimproved. We're creating a drainage problem by that. You're talking about the that, that area between the, right. the mailbox and, right. and the road. Right. It, if we're How is it a drainage problem? Well, where's the water going to go when it hits the road? To the left or to the right, correct? It should drain off, off left. Okay, into that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it's left alone and it drains today, it should be fine. But is that dirt today? Are we creating a mud hole? Uh, it looks like old pavement. I, I can't tell from the picture. Is anybody here familiar with that street? It's, it looks like kind of old thin pavement. But it's the cities, right? Yeah, it's the cities. So if a pothole develops there, then that homeowner can call the city and the city would be responsible for repairing it. That's correct. Or if that turned into a drainage problem, uh, that would be the responsibility of the city to That's repair. Correct. That's correct. But it is an area of the roadway, from what I'm hearing you say, that is not utilized as roadway? No, it, it really isn't. It may be used for parking. Uh, but uh, it, it has no function. As you can see, everybody drives on the street. I was told differently by administration that 
see can I go ahead and go and grab away? So uh, well if you if you look at the models. if you look at the power poles, okay, the power poles generally give you an idea yeah, of the division between the right of way exactly. and somebody's property. Now they cannot go let's say they cannot go beyond the power poles. What and what I see is a strip of pavement that looks like it's within the street right away and not on private property. Right. And and, 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 and I believe we should take a look at it. You know, potholes, or whatever, you know, fix them up and you know. Again, this is a call that the, the city makes on a daily basis as to whether to, to pay it or not. Okay. Thank you. Right. So this yes. picture up there to the to the right, you see yes, those ridges right there on the road? Yes. Is that complete right there? Uh, except for the sweeping, uh, it should be complete, yes. So is the gravel making the ridges in the photograph, or do we have ridges in, 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 in the seal itself? Oh, the, the, uh, the washboarding? Yeah. yeah, that's from the aggregate. That's a very common when you have a lot of aggregate that hasn't been swept. As, as cars roll over, it, it, it's called washboarding. Yes, that should go away. If it doesn't, it'll be fixed. Yeah, I, I saw that the other day and I kicked it and it's, it's, it's gravel. You see that on a lot of gravel roads, country roads, mm -hmm. where it's real loose and then it, and it forms that washboard. Very common. So who's going to be the final authority to, to sign off on the roads, on the streets? Will that be you or the you Uh We uh, we would do the final acceptance. We would, we would certify to you uh, that the contractors met all of the contractual requirements. So it would be us. And is there a time frame that we could go back and say, hey, this has not been? I mean, it is a two-year two warranty. I'm sorry? It's a two-year warranty. It's a two-year warranty. Two warranty. All right. Um, as, as everybody here knows, uh, we've heard some commentary uh, from the citizens uh, around the city. So I just wanted to give you a flavor of you know what we've been addressing with the public. Uh, uh, one of the most common uh, complaints uh, is people getting tar on their vehicles. And this generally happens when somebody drives down uh, a street that was just recently uh, chip sealed, you know, within, within a day. Um, <coughs> this actually happened to me on uh, 8th Street. I got home and I noticed there was a bunch of tar on my truck and I had to, I had to get some of that tar cleaner and clean it up.